I did find the photo credit. It's right up in the right upper right corner. And the photo is from David E. Lee. So, and of course, it's under a creative copy, DYSA license. There we go. Great. Well, um, since these sections are, uh, sessions are fairly short, um, we're going to want to start uh, pretty close to on time. Uh, right now it's uh, 2 o'clock, so uh, we'll begin. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, uh, I'm James Heilman. I go by, uh, by, by Doc James on Wikipedia. Uh, I primarily edit medical content, and uh, I'm here with my collaborator, Lori Thick, who is the co-founder of Translators No Borders. And we're going to be talking to you about uh, a collaborative effort we've been working on the last few years between Wiki Project Medicine and Translator Local Borders to bring medical content into as many other languages as possible. And of course, how you guys can get involved. So, here's a few ways to reach me. Um, I became involved with Wikipedia in 2007. Um, I'm an emerged doc by training. I was working a night shift. And I was looking on the internet and I found this horrible article. And it was jam-packed full of errors. And then I noticed the edit button. <laughs> and I hit it and I got hooked because I realized, wow, this stuff was not very good. And I could change that. And then when I realized just how many people were using Wikipedia, um, I found it really motivating and that you know this was really a key method way to get accurate, reliable uh, healthcare information out to people um, without it having a conflict of interest. So um, we formed a thematic organization around Wiki Project Medicine here about a year ago um, called Wiki Project Med Foundation um, to help work on collaboration with other organizations. And this is one of the collaborations that sort of come with that. And here with me with, is Lori Stick and I'll let her introduce herself. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it's terrific to be here today because you guys are changing the world. And I'm really, really, really excited to be a, a, a part of this community and with a tiny role in, in the great work that you're doing. So um, if you want to follow me, tweet me, um, join us, there you have some details. So, you've seen this slide a few times. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. You've seen this a few times. I mean, it's such an inspirational message. The Wikimedia vision of a world where every single human being can share in the sum of all human knowledge. But we want to change that a little bit. And our vision is a world where every single human being can share in the medical knowledge they need to live healthy and long lives, and for that to happen, it needs to be in their language. I'm the founder of Translators Without Borders, and in that role, I deal with language every day of my life, all over the world. My particular focus is the impoverished corners of the world, where the majority of the world live. And in my work, I've seen that even if there's physical access to knowledge, if you don't have language access, if it's not in the right language, then that knowledge doesn't exist. It's just not there. What's happening now is very exciting. We are bridging the digital divide. Three out of four people in Africa who are accessing the internet are accessing it on their cell phones. And that's really exciting. Wikipedia Zero is giving half a billion people access to the internet free of data charges. And that's, that's a world changer, that's a game changer. There's a new uh, program with Wikipedia as well that you might have heard of. If not, you're going to hear about it. Um, and actually the man responsible is just walked in the room. Uh, the, man, the man, the people responsible. It's uh, soon people will be able to access Wikipedia on simple handsets through the USSD protocol. And that's super, super important. But the thing is, 
the last barrier to access to knowledge is not the digital last mile. It's the language last mile. And that's what we're here today to talk to you about is how you can enjoy, how you can join us in empowering people to bridge that language last mile so that they can access the information that they need. And James is going to tell you about our project. Uh, no, he's not. Because I'm going to tell you first a couple words about Translators Without Borders. After I finished graduate school, I moved to Paris, France and started a translation company. One day, Doctors Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières, came to my translation company and asked for a quote for a paid commercial project. And I said, well, if we don't charge you for this project, can you use the money in the field? They said they could. They could send more medicines, more doctors, more nurses. Um, so that's how we started Translators Without Borders, to support nonprofits. But soon enough, and it started with Haiti. Thank you. So our first mission is to support nonprofits with pro bono translations. But when the earthquake hit Haiti, we realized that there was an even bigger problem, a huge global issue. And that's that people can't access the information they need because of the language barrier. In Haiti, aid groups were arriving on the ground, and they were unable to communicate to people about how to avoid, how to get safe, where the supplies were, how not to eat the silica gel that came with the, the emergency rations, all of those things they needed to communicate to people. And also in the, um, in the operating rooms, in the examination rooms, they couldn't communicate. And we realized there's a huge global issue. So that translators that borders from our first mission of supporting nonprofits, we started to expand our mission to raise awareness of the need for translation and our biggest mission, which is a life's work, my life's work, maybe your life's work, is to increase access to knowledge. Now James will tell you about our project. Come more slides. Rich 
languages, and there are four languages. Here's a rich language. Five million Norwegians have 400,000 articles on Wikipedia. That's a rich language. Fifty million Hausa speakers living in eight African countries have access to only 300 articles. And what, when you think about it, they are the people right now in this world who need access to Wikipedia the most. And they have access to, the Wikipedia, to Wikipedia the least. And that's what we want to change, and that's what we're working on. So, you know, the argument is, does Wikipedia matter? And of course, I would like to answer that with a affirmative, Wikipedia definitely matters. And why does Wikipedia matter? Because it is read by nearly everybody who has access to the internet. Um, and we're reaching out to those who do not yet have access. If we look at the medical content, uh, we have 26,000 medical articles. They get more than 230 million page views a month. We have 80,000 medication-related articles. They get 50 million page views a month. You, um, so that shows extensive usage by the lay public. We also know via surveys that an extensive proportion of physicians use Wikipedia, and they use it sometimes in clinical practice. We see the same number, 35 to 70 percent of usage among uh, pharmacists. Now, how does Wikipedia's medical content compare to that of other major medical uh, websites? The top three, Wikipedia comes in first, the NIH is second, WebMD, which hosts e-medicine, it comes in third. These are, Wikipedia is one of the three most used healthcare resources on the internet. If you look at the WHO's website, their usage, the usage of the WHO website is one-tenth of the usage of Wikipedia. So even though the WHO has incredibly good information, that content is not getting out to the general populace, and um, we need to uh, we need to sometimes fix that. Does Wikipedia have a huge number of editors? Well, yes and no. You know, there's almost a thousand of us here. It's amazing. Um, there's many millions of people who have edited Wikipedia um, on totality. However, the number who are working on medical content in English is quite small. Um, 450 have listed themselves as medical editors at one point in time. Um, the number that were active in the last six months in February were about 200. But the number that are currently active, you know, at, in any given month is probably closer to 50 to 70. Um, a research out of the UK looked at what proportion of the editors on Wikipedia Project Medicine are specialists in the field and what portion come from members of the lay public. And she found that the breakdown was about 50-50. Uh, I hear a lot of people say they're, they're hesitant to get involved because they're not an expert in the field. We have had some of our best articles written by people with little or no medical background. All they have is they care about the topic in question, and they realize how important it is. Now, the previous data was just for English. What about the other 285 plus languages with Wikipedia exists? The difficulty is we don't really know. There isn't really good data. And this is another thing that, you know, we as a movement need to change. We have great data for wiki projects for the English language, but we don't have this data for other languages. How many medical articles exist in Swahili? I have no idea. Um, you know, I'm not exactly, you know, there are some methods to, to determine this, and of course I'm looking for programmers to help me figure it out. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, and then, what are people looking at in other languages? You know, what are people who speak Swahili what sort of conditions are they looking at? And I think that sort of information would be very useful for us as translators to help us direct what topics we should be working on for those in the developing world. Now, we have Wiki Project Medicines in um, uh, 28 languages. However, most of them are inactive. 20 out of the 28 uh, Wiki Project Medicines are inactive, which is unfortunate. Um, as I said, we have no idea how many articles, uh, medical articles in other languages. Um, one possibility is to gather this data via Wikidata. We, we know the interlanguage links for, for every medical article, but we just sort of patch all of those together, we'll be able to figure out how many medical articles exist in each language. So, 
the primary project we're working on is something we've called Health Information for All in a Language of Their Choice. Um, every day, tens of thousands of people die from lack of low-cost healthcare information. Um, major factors, poor access per Health Information for All 2015. Um, uh, HIFA 2015 did a survey where they found that 60% of respondents in Africa said that a friend or family member could have been saved if they would have had healthcare information in their own language. The difficulty in, in Africa is if you go see the Western doctor, they don't, they, they don't speak your language. You don't understand what they're saying. It, you can't get good medical information from them. So a lot of people will go see a witch doctor um, because the witch doctor speaks their own language and that uh, can potentially result in poor outcomes. Further surveys, eight of 10 caregivers do not know the key symptoms of pneumonia. Um, four of 10 mothers in India believe that when their child has nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, fluids should be withheld. And you know, I work as an emergency physician, and in my country, many mothers come in and say, oh, I didn't really, you know, my kid was throwing up, so I didn't give them anything to eat or drink, because it just seemed to make them throw up more. And that, of course, is the exact wrong thing to do. We feel that Wikipedia is a viable method to, to, to address this knowledge gap that has been well documented. What we're working on is we're working on taking 80 to 100 key healthcare articles. Um, these articles currently make up more than 2,000 pages of text in English. We're gradually improving them to a professional standard in English, and then this is being followed by translation into as many other languages as possible, including simple English. Once the oracles are translated, they are then integrated back into the Wikipedia um, in that language. And then, of course, through the great work of people like Kuhl um, and his team, uh, getting easy access to these resources for everyone by a collaboration with cell phone companies. How many pay queues do these 80 oracles get? Currently, in June of 2013, these um, 80 oracles got nearly 12 million pay queues. So you really see that, uh, you know, most um, what people are looking at with respect to healthcare isn't, you know, they're not looking at all articles that, with the same frequency. They're really concentrating on a few key conditions that are exceedingly common worldwide. What are some of the issues we're facing globally? One issue is there's little healthcare content available in other languages. You know, not only is there little content available on, on the Wikipedia in those languages, but little content exists um, in journal articles, little content exists in textbooks in many, many languages. And that's because my profession is primarily English. You know, you know Swedish researchers won't publish in Swedish, they'll publish in English. Um, and so the only, you know, one of the only viable options is to take content written in English and translate it back into those languages. So each article, it gets translated by two translators. The first translator um, does the initial translation and then it's verified by the second. We're currently working on 40 to 50 languages and we're hoping to expand to all 286 and beyond. Another issue, those in the developing world have poor access to computers and the internet. Um, yet cell phones are widespread. Um, and even though cell phones are widespread, data charges are, are, are expensive. Um, you know, my wife and I were climbing uh, in Tanzania. We hiked up to the top of Kilimanjaro, and we had to bring a guide with us. Our guide spoke very little English. Um, he was an older gentleman. We got to the top. He pulled out his cell phone at the top of Kilimanjaro to text his wife to let his wife know when he'd be back for dinner. Um, and there are SIM chips for sale everywhere. It is unbelievable. Now, what sort of successes and difficulties have we had so far? You know, we've been working on this translation project for, um, seriously, for the last two years. Um, successes include that we've translated 2.2 million words into 50 some languages. Uh, some of our translations have become good oracles or featured oracles in the languages in which they've been translated into. <coughs> we have found some amazing Wikipedia integrators. Um, these are the people who take the translations once they're completed and add them to the Wikipedia in that language. And we have some great people in Croatia, Hungarian, and Romanian. We, however, had, have run into a few difficulties. The translators are not a big fan of 
MediaWiki markup. Um, we have color coded it to make it a little bit easier for them, but of course the Wikimedia markup has to stay in there, and the translators are working around it. Because of course the final product needs to have the Wikimedia markup in there so that the final translation has all the references just as they should be. Another issue is that some languages do not have a large vocabulary of words. So, you know, simplification is key for this aspect because we need to make, you know, have simple content so that the language has words that uh, match. Simplification is important, but it's also difficult. Other issues, we're still searching for uh, integrators in some languages. Uh, some of the content has been translated, but sort of is sitting in limbo between translators of the words in Wikipedia as we're having, struggling finding Wikipedians in those languages to move the content the final step. Templates are not uniform between languages. Um, I think it's Polish, they've changed uh, a lot of the reference templates, and when I asked them why they did that, they said, well, that's to make translation harder. Um, <sighs> yes, exactly. This could actually be true. So, <laughs> yes. that, that was the explanation I got. Um, I thought it was unfortunate. You know, they didn't want people to use Google Translate and pop something in there, but still not justification, I don't think, to make it harder. So, Languages are against, are against translation generally. Um, with respect to the Swedish Wikipedia, you know, we did some great translations. They're done by people who speak Swedish as a first language. Um, English is their second, they're translating the second language, their first language, which, which is the only way it can really be done. And the Swedish community is like, we don't want the content translated from Swedish. We want, or from English, we want the content built de novo in Swedish. Well, the unfortunate thing is your Swedish researchers are publishing in English. Um, and until that changes, you know, English is the lingua franca of medicine. A fourth issue is CAPTCHA. So, you know, I'm editing across 50 languages. Um, CAPTCHA is a pain, uh, and I wish someone get, would get rid of it. Uh, or at least for established editors. We, we need to have a way to make it easier for those editing across multiple languages not to have to edit CAPTCHA in every, in every different wiki project they deal with. This is a list of languages for which we have content that's being translated, that's sitting in limbo. If any of you guys in the audience, or if any of you people in the audience have speak any of these languages, edit in any of these languages, or have friends who edit in any of these languages, send them our direction. We would love your help. Lori's going to briefly speak about simplification. And I will uh, I'll show up this list of languages at the end. Of course, we want people with more languages than this, and we're, we've added about another half dozen, dozen languages beyond this that we're just starting on, um, and we'll be looking for more people soon. Is anyone here from Simple Wikipedia, or anyone has worked on Simple English Wikipedia? Can, can we talk afterwards? Because that's a super big issue for translation. And I, I think um, Simple Wikipedia could really um, be the place to launch translation into local languages, into, into languages that are very vocabulary poor. So I'll just quickly, you can see there's the standard um, Wikipedia article, how we're simplifying it um, so that it can be more easily translated. It's, we have developed a, a piece of software based on Acrolinks that lets us, um, unfortunately that's the word they chose to make me a slide of. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll talk to them about that later. So, but when you come up across a word that could be complicated, that maybe doesn't exist in that form, then then we get a we get a, a flag and we get the translation. We're working on the world's largest English to, to simplified English um, glossary. So here is our simplification, um, and you're going to talk about what we need help with. Thanks. So, one of the key things. We need help um, adding translated articles back to the Wikipedia uh, in question. Um, we need help developing bots and tools to look at how frequently uh, articles are, are, are read in other languages. This helps us give feedback to our partners and those who are supporting us. We need help improving articles in English. Um, my grammar is horrible. Uh, I have a little note on my top page explaining that to people. Um, and so we need both experts to help contribute content in English. We need non-experts to help contribute content in English, help with grammar and language. Um, 
And of course, there, there's opportunities with Wikipedians to become involved with translator and billboards. We've had a number of Wikipedians um, who are interested in translation. Translators of Words have a suite of translation tools available for their volunteers. Um, if Wikipedians are interested in getting involved, that can give you access to some new tools. This is just the call to action. We really would like you to join us. And what we need to do is bring a, that same community model from Wikipedia to bring the same diversity that the world has to bring that same diversity to, to Wikipedia. Translation software won't do it. We can't throw it into Google Translate. It isn't good enough and it doesn't cover all our languages. So please, please join us. So here's uh, here are the contact details for myself and Lori. I'm user JMH649 on Wikipedia. Um, I'm there most days. Uh, I go by user Doc James. Um, and there's Lori's uh, um, website. And then to leave you, and we have a, hopefully a couple of minutes here for questions, there's the, the list of languages that we're actively looking for volunteers right now. Um, and if anyone has any questions about what we're doing. Why did you limit only these those languages? What's that? Why did you limit yourself with your uh, those languages? Why have I listed these languages specifically? Oh, why have we limited ourselves to these languages? Well, we've been gradually building capacity, and you know, we started with with um, you know 20 languages initially, just because those were the languages we had translators available in at translators no borders. And then, as we find more translators, we're expanding you know the number of languages we're working on to more languages. So it, it's developing gradually. We're, we're growing the pro, uh, project over time. Yes? Is this only pages about medical sense? What's that? Is that only medical sense? Or yes. Medical so, so, you know, the 80 articles we're, we're concentrating on are, the 80, 100 articles we're concentrating on are key medical diseases. Um, we've discussed adding engineering topics like toilets, water sanitation, um, to the list of articles we're working on. And you know, um, if we could find an engineer or people who are interested in this subject area, we would love to add those topics to this, you know, basic engineering topics, basic water sanitation topics. It's key for health. We'd love to add that to the project. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about the Uh, the simplification, we've got some teams who, who are working on that, but we need to work more closely with simple Wikipedia because in um, a lot of African languages particularly, they really don't have the vocabulary. So I think that uh, that's, that's, that would be a key avenue to, to, to simplify English so that it can be translated. So to make it more translatable, which I think is, is maybe a, a, new, a new use for simple Wikipedia, simple English Wikipedia. No, it's not machine translation. We, there, we actually have a team of people that we need more, but we actually have a team of editors through a company called Content Rules, and they donate their editors to physically, manually simplify. Yes, we, we tried an initial pilot of simplification uh, a number of months ago, and the simplifications that, that we generated, they just weren't simple enough. So, you know, at that point, you know, the community, the Simple English Wikipedia community was rightfully unhappy with them because they, you know, they weren't reaching the, the, the grade level that they need to. Um, so we've gone back to the drawing board and, and we're sort of revamped things to get a truly simple version of these articles. How are you doing, dealing with the, the Wikipedia is not a medical source issue? Because I noticed that on some Wikipedias, like the
by trusting the Kia rather than the information they can get elsewhere? So there is no perfectly reliable source. Um, you know, my association, the Canadian Association of Birds and Pigeons, put out this textbook a number of years ago. And I flipped it open, and they had the dose of um, midazolam off by a factor of 10. If I would have followed this book blindly, I would have killed people at work. Um, you know, so, so I emailed the author. I'm like, there's an issue with this textbook. I have fixed my version, but what about all the other thousands of versions of this textbook out there? And he said, well, they're not willing to pay me enough to, to generate a new version. So, you know, we just won't worry about it. Um, so, you know, yes, you know, people need to be skeptical. Um, people need to use, you know, their common sense. People need to double check their sources. If you're making an important decision, you'd be a, a fool to go with any one source. You know, it, it's like a journalist. You don't just come to Wikipedia and copy and paste, you know, um, the text from Wikipedia and then publish in your journal article. Um, that's, you know, and journalists have done it, and thankfully the ones who have have lost their jobs, because that's just silly. So hopefully, you know, um, Wikipedia is better than many sources out there. Um, you know, you look at eMedicine, is it better than Wikipedia? No, it isn't. But, you know, it's, it's the only alternative freely available source that one can easily access. Um, you know, PubMed, you know, their articles are way too simple. You know, people don't get enough content there, which is why I think, you know, PubMed is less used um, than Wikipedia. So, you know, the way to deal with wrong information on Wikipedia is to convince more people who are honorable and uh, to come and fix it and make it right. Sorry, do you just call PubMed simple? Yes, so, so you know, if, if, if you look at the PubMed articles, they're not referenced. So, you know, the ones from Adam. <laughs> well, no, not, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking about the, the, the National Library of Medicine, the, oh. uh, you, you know, the, you know their encyclopedia, yeah, and, okay. and all the Adam articles. The Adam articles are one, not very good. Um, and two, they're way too simple. And three, they don't have inline references, so people can't verify them themselves. Right, okay, that's fair enough. That's good. Yes? Why, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Why are you not seeking for people to speak the African language? Why are you seeking for those people? We are. We are, absolutely. We're working in Africa. We have a training um, course that we are offering to build capacity. We are, we are absolutely looking for every single language in the world. That's what we're looking for. On this chart, we only have a few African languages, Swahili, Kenya, Rwanda. Um, that's because we're still building capacity and we are looking for every single language in the world. That's our goal. That's our lifetime goal. Any more questions? Oh, one more. No, probably there's never enough information. It probably means that we need more Russian volunteers. So, you know, um, with respect to translating into the big language of the Wikipedia, we have done some. You know, there's, there's an Italian team who's done amazing translations from English to Italian. There's a team uh, who are doing translations from English to Portuguese. But those, need, you know, in those big languages, we really need guidance from the Wikimedia community in that language. Because if content already exists, I would need a Russian Wikipedia to come and tell me, you, um, you know, translate this article, don't translate this article, translate this one, and then once the article is translated, that Russian uh, Wikipedia will then take care of the integration between, um, you know, the new translated version and what's already in Russian Wikipedia. And so the reason why we're not working on Russian yet is because no Russian Wikipedia has approached me and asked for, you know, to get involved and asked for some of these translations. And then, just to be clear, the only articles we're translating are articles that have passed good article or featured article status on English Wikipedia, so we're only translating the best content. And the other requirement is I need to be happy with the article. Uh, because some good articles, featured articles, aren't good articles and featured articles anymore, but they still rate to maintain their, um, their status. So can you reach your URL? I'll give you my card. Yeah.